What's up guys? How's it going? It's Matt here. So first of all, I want to start out. I hope you enjoyed your Labor Day weekend. We just got home from a family barbecue a few hours ago. Kids are all showered up and cleaned up and they're ready for school tomorrow and they're laying down for bed. So I wanted to do a quick little video tonight. All right. So let's start it like this. You don't need to be a high speed ninja operator civilian commando to defend your your family and your lives successfully with firearm you don't need that stuff guys i'm gonna be talking about this tonight specifically because a lot of people get intimidated when they go online and they see these high speed operator civilian operator schools you know, rolling around on the ground doing commando crap and doing high speed draws and holding grouping from that big from a hundred yards away of their pistol. And a lot of people get nervous and they're like, well, I can't do any of that. You know, how am I supposed to effectively, you know, defend my family? Maybe I should just leave my gun at home. Guys, I'm doing this video because I'm all about reality and common sense. All right, that's what I'm all about, reality and common sense. Now, <clears throat> for years and years and years and years and years, Armed citizens have been successfully defending themselves. They've been doing this longer before any of these training schools were even on the map. Right. There's only a few things that you actually need in the civilian world to actually defend your life efficiently. They're simple, guys. It's a reliable gun that works with a holster that you can carry the gun on. You need basic marksmanship. You need willpower and you need spiritual power. That's what you need, all right? Now, yes, you could go to these schools, you can spend an arm and a leg to actually attend these schools, and you can benefit, you can actually learn a lot of stuff from these schools, like some of the stuff they're doing in these schools. I'm like, none of that is even really gonna help you if you know, you're know you in the back of a gas station somewhere or you know a restaurant or wherever you are, and someone pulls a gun and you need to defend yourself. And, you know, I just see that, some of that stuff, it's just like, you know, for me, it looks like what they're doing is trying to be expeditionary, what, what do they call it, expedition shooters that basically look cool with the things that they're doing. You don't need that to defend yourself, guys. So when I say a gun that shoots in a holster, you know, you don't need a specific model of a pistol that works. You just don't. If you like 1911s, carry a 911. If you like Glock, carry a Glock. Anywhere in between, carry it if you like it. If it's between a 9mm and a 44 Magnum, you're right in the sweet spot for self-defense with a pistol. That is the range that you want to stick in. You need a gun that is reliable, that holds one of those calibers in it, that you can handle. That's all you need. When it comes to holster, you just need a decent quality holster that basically protects the trigger guard and that allows you to successfully draw and unholster your pistol without having an ignition discharge, all right? So you need a gun that shoots and a holster that works, all right? Next step, you need marksmanship, basic marksmanship. A lot of these schools will literally preach, you need to be able to hit targets this big, you know, from, you know, 50 yards away in order to be successful. You don't need that, guys. The human body is a big body, all right? There's a lot of vital areas where you can hit in this body, and the grouping is about that big. That's the size grouping that you need to be able to hit in, all right? And you're talking between 10 to 25 yards. That's your average size grouping you need. You can, that, that's a lot of grouping. You can do that. You need basic marksmanship to be able to get it in that spot. You hit that area as many times as you possibly can until they stop becoming a threat. That's all you need when it comes to that. Next, you need willpower. Willpower is important. Um, people get injured in these firefights. People get injured in these all the time. You have to have the willpower to fight through it. You have to have the willpower the courage to stand up, pull your gun, and pull the trigger to defend the lives of yourself, your family, or the other people around you. You need that willpower and courage in order to do that. All right? Then the next and final one, and a lot of people don't talk about this, you need some sort of spiritual health. You, you literally need some sort of spiritual health. Now, the reason I say this, guys, is because when you kill someone, it almost feels like a part of your soul was just ripped away from your body. Now, that's the only way I could explain it. It is a really tough thing to have to deal with, and it's something you have to deal with for the rest of your life. The worst part is, for military, is the first time it happens, it all feels, all feels the same, and then after that, it just becomes dull, dull and numb. It's almost like you're not even there. But that first one is always the hardest to get through. It really is. You need to be able to fight your way 
through that. You need to have the strength to pick yourself up, the strength to justify what you're doing. And you have to have the faith that, you know, what you did isn't going to damn you. You have to have that spiritual strength. You, you do. You know, I don't care, you know, what your faith is. But I can tell you this. I've been in situations where I've seen mortar fire hit within the kill radius, but for some reason, the shrapnel went in this specific area and didn't hurt a single person that was close to me or anyone around us. And we were confused. We we're like, how the hell did we just survive that? You know, something is out there and something does help you, all right? So you've got to have some sort of spiritual health, whatever type of spiritual health it is. Now, those are basically the mains, the main things that you need to be able to defend yourself. You know, you could learn a lot, like I said earlier, you can learn a lot from these schools. You can benefit from going to these schools. But at the same time, you know, if you're in the back of a grocery store or a gas station or wherever it is or a coffee shop or whatever it is, you know, you don't need to be rolling around on the ground doing somersaults and, you know, all kinds of crazy stances and stuff like that in order to gauge a target. It's usually very quick and it's going to be over it just as quick as it started. All you need is to act and act efficiently. Guys, that's all you need. So if you're watching these other channels and stuff like that, guys, you know, don't be scared. Don't be intimidated. You do not need to be like that. You just don't need to be like that guy. You will do fine if you have those specific tools that I told you. A gun that shoots with a holster that works, marksmanship, willpower, and spiritual health. That's all you need, and you can successfully defend your life, all right? Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and all my other videos. If you will, guys, down in the description below, you'll see my link to my Patreon page. If you like this channel and you want to support this channel, go click on it and go check out my page over there. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, like, share, subscribe. Tell your friends about me, guys, and remember, it's our responsibility to take care of each other and protect each other. Peace.